Hey, welcome back. So my name is Naim and we are building a social media for good habit building. In this application, you can join challenges like learning a language or uh, running every day or exercising every day. These types of challenges where you upload your proof of photo or a video of yourself doing that thing and then you share it with your community and with everybody else who is doing that challenge so they can encourage you and then you can uh, get experience points and then climb your way up into the leaderboard. Which which day are we on? 13th day? Yeah. Let me check. Let me let me make sure I lost track of the days, you know. Okay, so we are at the 13th day. And today, as promised, I have built some of the functionality. I have built some of the UI as well that I can showcase finally. <laughs> so we have the stories now. We can associate with the users and we can associate with the challenges. So this is roughly how it's going to look like. I will put a screenshot somewhere in the screen, somewhere here. Okay. And I don't give a fuck what you say Yeah, I'ma do shit my way So you can go kick rocks I'ma stack bricks up Build what I want to make Yo, I got a lot of shit to say So I'ma do this every day I'll be writing things until I'm fucking buried in my grave Six feet deep, wonder but my body won't decay Cause my messages are timeless So they'll put them on display Oh yeah, I rap with a certainty I have a sense of urgency A message for eternity For everyone internally I had some people burden me But now they fucking learn to see I ain't the one to fuck with now Today, I have got a request that how I actually built my infrastructure and going into a bit of a technical terms. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you now. I'm gonna explain how the uh, tech stack is working. Let's start with that actually. So in order to build proof of concept, I have utilized whatever I have expertise on plus that whatever is out there quick that is outside of my expertise or I know but there are better ways of doing that but regardless in order to build this application fast I have using these uh, tools so uh, my front end I'm using react native quite obvious because react native is um, you can create an application both on iOS and Android. There are other options like Flutter, but I'm not uh, very familiar with Flutter. I have experience with React and React Native development before, so I have utilized that. And uh, for the front end, since this is my background and I can build components really, really fast, I didn't use any libraries. I would, I try to avoid using libraries as much as I can so I can build my custom components so that I don't have these you know, uh, unpredictable side effects, especially from the front end side. And that's the reason I don't use much of the libraries other than, let's say, maybe gesture handlers or uh, image uploads or any other like, you know, async storage that you can, you need to, uh, sorry, the keychain store that you need to install into your React Native project. Uh, let's say for the backend, I'm using Node.js with Express um, API, Express Framework. And there is a quicker way to actually build API, but in terms of like, you know, security and everything, I would rather um, use like, you know, completely different API service that I can host it on AWS EC2 instances. And um, you can do that with the faster way could be with Lambda serverless, and it's also like a very cost effective way as well. And using API gateway and, uh, and that's it pretty much, but it's not, there are some security concerns around it. It's fast, yes, it can be built to do proof of concept, but considering this is a social media application and it's like a very complex application, then I didn't want to use Lambda. So it would, you know, as the project grows, then it would become very unmaintainable. And uh, as a DB, I'm using MongoDB because I try to avoid using SQL databases like Postgres because MongoDB is kind of like flexible and it's also very uh, fast in terms of indexing and search and everything. So MongoDB, easy to use. There's also Elasticsearch, which is also fast, but um, Elasticsearch has more advanced features than MongoDB. In this case, MongoDB is going to be much easier. 
And for the authentication, I'm using AWS Cognito because it's out of the box. I have mentioned this in the previous videos as well. It's uh, quite nice. It's handling all the token and refreshes and uh, logout functionality. And for the storage, where we store the videos and the photos of the proofs that are coming into the challenges, I'm using AWS S3, which is a storage buckets that you can directly create like pre-signed URLs and keep it private as well. Then uh, you can upload videos and photos in the buckets itself. Then you can also create another like streaming URLs to stream the data from the storage directly. And, uh, and then there are like, you know, much faster ways, but I'm quite liking AWS and it's scalable for later on. I could have used, you know, Heroku to deploy. It's much faster. It's like, you know, in a couple of minutes, you can deploy your Node.js API into Heroku. It's quite user friendly. It has a very nice UI and everything, but it's not scalable for later. And it might cost you quite a lot later on, um, depending on your usage cases and everything. I, that's one of the reasons that I use AWS as EC2 instances. And to in order to do that, you need to also Dockerize your um, backend as well. So you would make sure that this backend would work in any kind of computer. It's not just, you know, it works on my computer and it doesn't work on the uh, other computer. Docker basically handles all of that. And for the release, I'm planning to use either AWS Amplify or Code Push. I really like Code Push, especially when you have like a, if you build applications before, mobile applications before, then you have submitted this to App Store or Play Store before. And then when you created a new version, you go to the App Store and Play Store and submit it all over again to you know release a new version. With Code Push, since React Native is uh, providing JavaScript, HTML and CSS code, that you can do small changes, small UI changes, especially in the JavaScript code, then you can push this directly without going through this uh, application process. So that's a very big advantage for me. So I don't have to create, you know, like new versions and everything. That's why I will plan to use either Code Push or AWS Amplify. I have experience with the Code Push before. I really like their um, infrastructure. You can see, you know, a lot of dashboard features and everything where the application is failing, which users are getting affected. You can roll back. AWS Amplify have similar feature, but I never used it for React Native. So I might explore or just go down the route that I know. So we will see about that. Anyway, so that's pretty much it from the infrastructure of the application. Small when you stand it right next to me, I'm five ten bitch, but I'm ten feet. Next I don't give a fuck what you say. Yeah, I'ma do shit my way. So you can go kick rocks, I'ma stack bricks up. That's it from today, and I will see you in the tomorrow's video. Bye. Build what I want to make. Cause I don't give a fuck what you say. Yeah, I'ma do shit.